Hey everyone, today we got a video on configuring your Sharp MFP to be able to use um, LDAP browsing. Um, this functionality is really beneficial when it comes down to um, organizations that have a lot of users and um, you guys don't have the time to be able to create address book entries on the machine uh, manually. What you can do with this, this helps you uh, bring the user information in and, uh, and allows users to be able to search for other users uh, within the domain to be able to uh, send email to directly from the Sharp MFP. You will need, um, you should have direct access to your Active Directory server um, just to verify the search route. Um, and we'll go over that in just a second. So what you're going to need is you'll need to know um, your LDAP server. You'll need to have a user um, configured. And um, you're basically going to need to want to find out your uh, search route. And uh, that will all take place on the uh, Active Directory server. And then we can take that information and go back to our Sharp MFP and plug all that stuff in. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to type in the IP address to our Sharp MFP and we're going to enter that into a browser and we're going to hit enter. Once you hit enter you should be taken to a page that looks just like this. Once you're there in the upper right we're going to click the login and we're going to log in as the administrator. Password is all lowercase admin so all lowercase admin. Go ahead and click login and then on the left we're going to open up the network settings and then we're going to go down to LDAP. Now in here um, you guys will be probably looking at a blank um, list here. I already have one configured. What I'll do is I'm just going to go over the steps that I used um, to um, ent enter this and create this one. So basically what you guys would do is you would click add once you click add, you would have to enter some information. First information, it's gonna, first bit of information it's going to ask you for is going to be a name. And this is just a friendly name. Um, it doesn't have to be anything network specific, just as long as you guys recognize that um, this is your global address book setting for, you know, server or whatever. I just put test in there. The second bit of information we're going to need is going to be the search route. Now, the search route, this is usually the most challenging thing um, for the users to be able to come up with. Um, so, essentially what you guys want to do from here is uh, get on your Active Directory server and then open up your Active Directory users and computers. Once you have that open, you should get a window that looks similar to this. You can see Active Directory users and computers. I have my domain name here. And then within my domain, if my folders are not displayed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this arrow and then I'm going to have all my folders here. Now these basically are all the uh, group folders. Most of your users will be uh, dumped by default into your user folder, but if you have other folders that you're directing users to, then you'd want to click on that. So basically from here, you want to find the main folder that all of your users in and you want to right click and you want to go to properties. Once we're in the folder properties, we're going to go over to the attribute editor and we're going to come down to the distinguished name. Distinguished name is going to give us our search route for the folder that we're trying to browse to. So from here, we want to copy this information and then enter that information directly here. Exactly like it looks. So that's going to be the easiest and best way to get your search route. Once you have the search route entered, what you're going to do is you're going to enter your LDAP server name. Now this is going to be the host name or IP address. You can see right now I have a host name up there, but if I wanted to, I could also do an IP address. I think it's .8 or whatever. Once I have my LDAP server name or IP, I have this field here. Most um, 
most server types, um, all this information that's grayed out, this is all standard default stuff. Um, if you guys have a custom configuration for your attribute fields, for your users and stuff like that, you can go ahead and change this stuff as needed. But 99% of the time, just leaving it at default is fine. So you can go ahead and just leave it there. After good with the name and the search root and the server name, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down here to our authentication area. Port number is going to be 389 by default. If you guys are using SSL, you may need to change this port. So if you know that your server is using SSL, go ahead and check this, and then you can go ahead and update the uh, port as, as needed. Timeout, you're never going to have to change. Username. This is where you're going to enter the a domain username. Um, the machines can be a little tricky with this. Um, I've kind of played around with uh, some different configurations um, and stuff like that. The most consistent authentication configuration that I have found is all you need is just a standard domain user. Um, input into here. Um, by default, uh, the LDAP, you know, it will have standard web, <coughs> excuse me, standard domain user will have, you know, access to be able to uh, find users and stuff within that area. So again, from here, go ahead and type in a standard username. And just as an FYI, I have done, you know, domain admins in here. Like I said, the one that seems to work consistently is just a standard domain user. So just go ahead and put the domain username in there. Click change password, type in the password. The authentication type should be set to NTLM. Um, again, by default, most Windows servers will just be using NTLM. However, if you guys are using, you know, um, Digest or Kerberos, you can go ahead and change that as well. Simple and anonymous um, by default is extremely rare to be enabled by default. So, like I said, most of the time with the Windows servers, you're just going to want to choose the NTLM. That's basically it. Once we have all this information in here and we're happy with it, what we want to do is we want to run a connection test. So we click on this, click Execute, Verify, click OK. You can see I got a successful test up here. Once we're happy with it, we submit it. From here, we'd want to do one further test just to make sure that we are able to search for users. So what we do, is we would click on address book on the left and then click add. Once we click add, we could come down here to the global address search, click on that, come here and then just type in a domain user's name. So if I search for just my first name, it's going to find my information here. I can highlight it and click add. and then click OK. As you can see, it automatically populated my email address. And then from here, all I would have to do, just type in an address name, click here, the register for the frequent use, come down here, check the set as default used, and then click Submit. Once I do that, that'll go ahead and save my address book entry to the machine. Now, however, if you guys are not interested in saving the address book entries, again, all the user would have to do is at the machine, they would walk up to the machine, they would click email, click global address, type in the username that they want to send their scan to, select it, and then just go ahead and click OK. And that's basically it.